Hey, hey, welcome to another Altos tip. And in this tip, I'm going to share with you how to remove as much emotion out of this whole listing price discussion as you can. Now, I was a subscriber uh, to Altos for six years, and I had a really, really high 90% closing rate with my listing presentations. And I think a lot of it had to do was I could one, set myself apart from my competition. I also was able to talk about the market in a way that other agents just couldn't. And I think a lot of it had to do also with taking some of that emotion out of that discussion, right? Because that's the most contentious part of our listing presentation is when we start talking about the money. So let me show you the strategies that I use. I'm gonna go through this really fast, you guys. Um, so you can stop, you can you know rewind, and you can play it again. But I'm going to go through this quickly to try to keep this as short as I can. And grab my writing utensil. The first thing I always talked about with my clients was I wanted them to know when they're looking at these charts not to focus on a particular number. I also told them that these are 90-day trend lines, so it's going to show them what has occurred in the market in the most recent 90 days. Price-wise, it's been up and down, but if we compare it, it's pretty been pretty flat for the last 90 days. We can see that um, the, uh, let's see, inventory has been slightly moving up. We did see the days on market had begun to drop and it, it kind of leveled off to about six weeks ago. So good information, very quick for people to look at it and consume this information. You don't need to have a college degree. It's very, very um, quick for people to look at and draw certain conclusions. Now, Two key statistics. These are statistics that MLSs don't typically track, and these are, for the most part, exclusive to Altos because other companies just don't track these. Now, one of them is this one right here, and that is what percentage of the active listings have reduced their list price? This is really, really critical to help kind of set the tone with your clients. If this percentage you know, especially this percentage, 43%. I mean, my gosh, when a seller hears that, that 43% of the active listings were overpriced. That's the way I would say it to them. 43% were overpriced, so the sellers had to reduce their list price. Okay, that right there is psychologically, they're thinking, oh my gosh, well, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to be part of that 43%, right? They're psychologically, they're thinking that, even though they might not express it to you, they're thinking that. So this is really, really important. The other th statistic that I focus on is this one right here, the market action index, because that is actually our own algorithm. And what that shows us is it really shows us two things. It shows us one, the momentum in the market. And what I mean by that is the market picking up or is the market slowing down? And the second thing it's gonna show us is who is the market favoring? Is it favoring buyers or sellers? Anything to this direction is going to favor buyers, and anything in this direction is going to favor sellers. All right, let's dive down to the rest of the uh, report here, and we're going to focus just on this particular area. The way I presented this data was I talked about the natural rhythm of the market and how that impacts them as a seller. When we present data, we can't just present it. We, we have to, one, we want them engaged in it, right, so, they can, so that they own it. And the secondly, and secondly, is um, this is where the logic comes in, right? If I can show them, give them basic understanding of the market, they understand the rhythm of the market and where we are currently at in that rhythm. Then when we talk about price and we talk about my marketing strategy, which might include adjusting the price at some point, I'm always going to base that on the market conditions, not a certain number of days. I'm not going to say, well, 45 days from now, if we don't have an acceptable offer, we need to lower your um, list price. I, I didn't use it. I didn't do it that way. I said, let's look at the current market conditions to determine what your competition is doing and see what we need to do to better compete with them. Right? So what I would simply do to have them engaged in this is I might actually just draw a couple lines here like this. These happen to be right around January. I'm gonna point out that we're looking at the median list price. Prices move up, right? 
and I'm going to draw these arrows. And I'm going to say, can you tell me what's happening with the median list prices during this time? Well, Jeff, it looks like the prices are moving up. You're absolutely right. I don't want to stump them. I'm not trying to show them how smart I am. I want them to be 100% confident that they can answer my question because I'm trying to empower them. I'm trying to give them this information. If I can empower them, provide them with information they don't know, then what that does is it sets me self, uh, sets myself apart from my competition and it makes them feel good about me. They, it builds my credibility and it builds their trust in me, which is critical because I'm competing with others, right? So I can do this by simply presenting this data in a logical manner. And when they see the logic behind the, the price and how the price fluctuates throughout the year, then they understand, hey, if I'm talking to them here in April and May, the prices have already peaked. And if we put their home on now, I'm going to actually recommend that we do a list price down here instead of up here. Because if we do it up here, as everybody else starts dropping the price, we're going to be chasing after those. We don't want to do that. We want to be ahead of the curve. And if I'm talking to them, you know, this time of year in January, I'm going to say, hey, this is a fantastic time for you to get into the market. Median list prices always move up. So I can get you more for your home in a shorter period of time. That's the value in this. The natural rhythm of the market shows uh, really kind of logically, one, how much we should be listing their property at, how long it's going to take for us to get uh, an acceptable offer, and then thirdly, your marketing strategy, right? So if you don't see the natural rhythm in the list price, let me just touch on that real quick. There's a couple of other statistics that you can look at. One is the days on market, and then the other is the inventory. Now, here's a key statistic to share with your sellers. Uh, again, part of this is about pricing. You're preparing them for what you're going to recommend as a list price. And that is that statistic, again, the one that nobody else tracks, but Altos does, and that is this price decrease. Not only can we see what the current percentage is, but you guys, we can see when other sellers typically begin to reduce their list price. How powerful is that? So that you know ahead of your competition, right? You know that, hey, in whatever it is, March and April, that's when more sellers begin to reduce their list price. You let your sellers know that so that if you're listing it in January, that it would make sense to maybe late February, early March to talk to them about reducing their list price. Again, you're letting the chart show that. And then, and then when you have that discussion for them, you've already kind of presented it to them. Let them know what the expectations are. We're going to look at the chart and see what it's doing this year, right? But if history repeats itself, I just want you to be aware that your competition is going to start reducing their list prices in March. Fantastic information, you guys. I hope that you found this useful. If you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one with me, man, just shoot me an email. I'd love to spend some time with you. Thank you so much.